Hello and welcome to this latest video in the Tableau for Sport series. This time we're going to overlay zones onto a pitch. So there's a few different aspects to this. It's similar to a video I did around kind of average positions or looking at um, where players play on a pitch, you know, putting them into their, their positions. Uh, we need to create a, a kind of template file to attach to our, our raw data. So I'm going to show you that first and then we'll go through building the actual uh, viz. So I'm going to use um, Microsoft Paint high tech for this and um, just to explain a little bit. So I'm using StatsBomb data and I know that the coordinates of that pitch are 0 to 120 and it's uh, 0 to 80 high. Okay. Now that's important because depending on what data source you're using and how it's been coded, you will need to know the dimensions of the underlying data that you're using. What are we trying to achieve? Ultimately, sorry, one second, we want to get to this. So I want to be able to create a view that breaks the pitch into various zones. In this case, I've, I've chosen 12, but you'll see with this technique, you can use as many zones and make them different sizes and that kind of stuff as you go. And this is the pass success percentage. Now, again, you could use any stat that you wanted on top of this, but this just allows me filter. For example, if I hit Henderson, it updates to Henderson's, I think, 26 passes in the Champions League, where he's hit them from and how accurate or successful they were. OK, so that's ultimately what we're trying to create. The first thing is I need to create that template file, as I said, and to do that, I need to break the, the data uh, down. So roughly and again, this is just for illustration, but I broke the pitch into 12 zones, something like this. OK, so three across and then roughly into thirds that way okay so this gave me my 12 zones and i again just give them a number so one two three up to 12 and so on so what needs to go in my template file well what needs to go is is each corner i'll use a different color here so each corner of that square needs to get put into an excel file okay so i need to put the coordinates of each of those corners into an Excel file. And I need to do that for all of my zones that I want. So again, in this case, 12. Okay, so I'll show you what that file looks like. And I will share this afterwards so you don't have to go through the same pain as I did creating it. Okay, but ultimately what we've got here is we've got a shape number. So we just give each shape a, a unique number. And we put in, as I said, the four points or the four coordinates, okay? So for example, I know that this is zero, zero, this starting one down here is zero, zero. So that's what goes into my Excel file there, zero, zero. This is 20 high. And this is again where you choose the zone types. So I know that it's X zero, Y 20, zero, 20. I come out here 30. So this is 30, 20. And then this one becomes 30 on the X, zero on the Y. So there's my four coordinates for the point. OK, so give it a, a unique shape number and then we just give every row a, a kind of path or an ID. You'll see why that's important as we go through, as we build a base. OK, I'll share these files afterwards, but that's ultimately what you're doing. So you need to know the coordinates of the pitch you're working with or the data provider or whatever. If you code it yourself, what what are the dimensions you use? Uh, and then you need to just roughly on a piece of paper, kind of sketch out the zones that you want and try and figure out what the, the coordinates of, of each of the four corners of those will be. OK, and you then create that into a, an Excel file or CSV file that we can join onto the data. OK, so let's build the viz. Once you've got that done, I'm going to open up a new workbook and I'm going to connect to the Champions League data. This is data I've used previously. Go on to the StatsBomb website. You can get loads more free data and check that out. If you go back to my very first video in the series here, uh, there's a link to download this file as well. OK, it has two Champions League in it, Champions League finals in it. I just want the 2019 final. And then I want to add in this zone template that I've made. So I have saved that Excel or CSV file there as a zone template file. So that's the one where all my coordinates, I need to go and grab that. And what we want to do is join this or relate this on to our, our source data source. OK, now I'll go back to paint for a second and just explain in our source data what we have. Again, I'll change color here. Let's use blue. 
we have individual data points. Okay, so these are the little dots that appear all over and they have their own x, y coordinates. Okay, so for example, something like this one here would be along the x is, let's say it's 110 and the y it's halfway, so it's 40. Okay, so this single point here, that's the x, y. Now what I want to be able to do is look at the individual point and see does it fit within my square 11. So this is my 11th box. So I need to find out does it fit within here. So I'm kind of just grouping it, all of these points. So for example, this group over here, I need to look at the individual point and see what box it fits into. And for that, we're going to write an if statement. Okay, so we're going to say if, you know, the x is between here and here, and the y is between here and here, then it belongs in box 11. Okay. Right, so let's drag in our zone template. And Tableau immediately asks us, how do we relate these things? Okay, and we're going to relate these by the individual x, y to the group kind of shape number that we've given it here. Okay, now I'm not going to type this out on this video because that would make it even longer. Uh, I have already done it. And again, I'll include the code on my website so that you can go and just grab that if that's easier for you. Okay. It's, it's actually more straightforward than it looks. Um, I'll explain it briefly now. Okay, so all that's happening is we're look, location zero is the X coordinate and location Y is the Y coordinate. The float is just turning it into a number. So Tableau is reading that Champions League file. It's reading them as text, but they're numbers, they're numeric values. Um, so the, that's all the float is doing. So it's saying, turn this into a number and then check if it's less than 30 and check if the Y is less than 20. Okay, so let me just show you that in that first example. So check that the X is less than 30 and the Y is less than 20. So check if any of the individual dots are in this box and if they are, give them the number one, then one. Okay, and I'm just repeating that for each of my squares. Okay, so this is something you could potentially do in your raw data depending on if you're collecting it uh, yourself or it's going through some sort of process. It's probably better done there if you're you know, with a club or, or you're trying to set up a, a more robust solution. Uh, but for this purposes here, it's perfectly fine to do it in this uh, Tableau join relationship window. Okay, so click OK. It relates to the shape number. Okay, so that one, two, three that I'm creating in the if statement should match to a shape number. That's in our Excel file. And um, we can click close to that. Okay, and now we're ready to uh, build out our view. Okay, so there's a few different steps to this. You could just go and build it um, as you need. What I want to do is I want to be able to label the boxes, uh, to label the boxes right in the center. So I'm actually going to create a, a new calculated field here. And again, I'm just going to grab this from my example. Okay. Uh, I think I can just copy this across. Okay, let's go into this calculation here. So all this is doing is saying take the min of x plus the max of x. It's really just finding the center of my shape. Okay, so all I'm doing is saying for each of the shapes, find the very center point. Okay, that's all that uh, mod X is doing, and we're going to duplicate that and create a mod Y. Now, the name is whatever you want to call it, and we'll make this mod Y. Okay, and that's what I'm going to use then to build my XY map. So we're going to go X and Y. My mark type is going to be a polygon, and I want to make these both dimensions. So I'm just dragging them up to make them dimensions. We're going to put the shape on the detail and put the path on the path. Okay, and it builds this giant square. It doesn't look like it's done much, but actually if I add in a border, we can start to see that we've got our, 
or zones. So for example, there's 12, shape 11, shape 10. Okay, so it's starting to look like it should. Uh, let's reduce the transparency way down and let's add in our background pitch. Now I'm going through this relatively fast because I have done some of this in previous videos. Um, so I'd suggest you go back and have a look at them if you need to. So OK and OK. So you can see now we've got our grid on top of a pitch. OK, and as I said, you can mess around with the opacity uh, to make that clearer to see. OK, I like to, whenever I'm creating these, is fix the axis um, on this. Sometimes Tableau can resize the images, but I just like to fix them. OK, great stuff. Right, we're pretty close. Uh, the only thing I can't do now is I can't add a label on a polygon, okay? Um, which was which was the issue before. Uh, so that's one thing we'll need to, to tidy up. But let's have a look at building out our pass percentage. So let's at least color these squares dependent on our, on our pass percentage. And again, that's gonna be a calculated field called pass percentage. And it's gonna be if, outcome name is null. So again, the way stats bomb data is coded, if this is null, then it's a successful pass. Okay, so I want to sum up all that. Again, there's different ways of calculating this. Uh, if is null, then one, basically. And I'm going to divide that by the count of event type, which is just essentially the number of passes in this case that there are. OK, so I'm going to click OK. That gives me my pass success. Let me just filter these all the way down to passes. OK, and then I can put my pass percentage on the color. And Tableau is using a you know very light blue to even lighter blue, and um, so I'm going to make this more orange blue. And something to think about is where you want to set the center. So this could be like a benchmark that you have as a key performance indicator or um, something like that. I'm going to set my center at 0.65. So that means 0.65 percent will be gray. Anything less will start to go orange. Anything more will start to go blue. Okay. So that's something you can control there. All right, so immediately now across the game, I haven't filtered for any team or players, but I can see that you know the percentage looks relatively high up here uh, and much lower in these red squares. But I would like to be able to label that, okay? So I do want to be able to label this. And unfortunately, with a polygon, I, I don't have the label feature available. So what I need to do is create what's known as a dual axis chart. So I'm gonna hold control on my PC whatever that is on a Mac, and just drag this and create a, a second identical chart, okay? And when we do that for a dual axis, we get two marks cards over here. So you can see one controls the first one and the second one controls the second one. Now, I don't need the path and I don't need the color on it. And this won't be a polygon, but it will be a circle. And now you can see I have a point in the middle of all of my shapes. Okay, it's a circle. I'm going to reduce the opacity. I'm going to get rid of the border. Okay, so there's nothing there. There is something there, but it's of zero color. And now we can put our pass percentage as a label on that. Okay, so let's format that as a percentage. I'm not going to show any decimals. And one other thing I want to put on is the number of passes. So in this case, it's going to be the count. And I'm going to put that in the label. Click label, click the three little dots, and let's just format this a bit. So I'm going to go 16 and Tableau bold for that one. We'll make that 10, and let's make it light. And I'll just stick a bracket around it. Okay, I want to center it and make sure it's in the middle of all of those. And the last step get this number on top of this image is to click the little drop down and go dual axis 
and just make sure you see you get two axes, one at the top and one at the bottom. The default is that they're not synchronized. So right click on one and synchronize, just make sure they're always aligned. Now I can start to tidy this up. So turn off all the headers. And let's grab my filters. So I'm going to stick a team filter on, right click and show filter. And I'm going to stick a player filter on, right click, show filter. So let's filter for Liverpool. Let's only show the players that are relevant there and make a single value, for example. So now if I click on Henderson, I can see where has Henderson made his passes and what his success is. And you see we lose a value here. That's to do with my percentage calculation. So when you're using percentages, obviously if you end up with zero, zero divided by something or something divided by zero uh, doesn't really compute. So the easiest way around it is wrap that all in a ZN and you'll show your 0%. Okay, so I can see where does Henderson make his passes? Nothing on the right hand side here according to this data and how successful has he been? And you can go through and you know pick different players. Okay, so there's Trent. Okay, and it might actually look like I have this potentially the wrong way round. So I need to reverse that because 80 is actually the bottom and zero is the top. So again, checking your pitch coordinates and all that is a good idea. So you can see Trent there. And if I pick Robertson, I should see something more along the left. Yeah, and that looks a little bit better. Okay, a uh, couple of things you could do to tidy this up in the title here. is let's swap this out for the actual team name, maybe even the player name. And I'm gonna put in an actual pass, success percentage by zone. Something like that. Okay, so the title now updates as you flick through the players as well, which again is quite useful. If I click all, I think I get an all. Yeah. Okay, so that is how to create zones on top of a pitch. I'll put all the materials in my blog. Hopefully that was useful. There's a few bits to it, so go through it at your own time. And uh, any feedback or any questions, please let me know. Thanks very much.